Good evening and welcome, friends. This Friday evening burning question, of course, in politics. There is no weekend and it's been a busy last 24 hours with the Enforcement Directorate going ahead and arresting Arvind Kejriwal. Parallelly, the Congress party cried foul on, invest, on income tax proceedings against it, even as a Delhi High Court quashed one of their petitions which sought a stoppage of an in income tax investigation going against them. It's a big important one and we're going to focus on it because what it says is that the Congress party while pontificating on electoral bonds issue, was happy taking cash for running its organization from regional satraps like Kamal Nath, like D.K. Shiv Kumar in Madhya Pradesh and Karnataka respectively and some businessmen in Gujarat. It's interesting that the Congress party is happy dealing with cash, most of it black money, but then questions the electoral bonds which have proper KYC. So that's going to be our focus. On the other side, let's begin with the headlines first. ED makes scaring charges against arrested Kej Diwal and remand note says he was the kingpin of the liquor gate. The agency tells Supreme Court that liquor policy kickbacks were used to fund Goa elections. Stand by as Delhi court is all set to pronounce order in Kejriwal's remand application by the ED shortly. Up continues to be in complete denial, hits the streets over Arvind Kejriwal's arrest, says ED has no evidence. In Odisha, no BJP BJD tie up. Both the parties to go solo on all 21 Lok Sabha seats in the state. And in Timpu, Prime Minister becomes the first non-Bhutanese national to be honoured with their highest civilian honour, the Order of Druk Galp. <coughs> All right, an honor for the Prime Minister there. Good evening and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. As we approach 2024 Lok Sabha polls, the specter of crisis seems not to be leaving the opposition space. Uh, we have uh, Arvind Kejriwal in the ED custody and in a major setback for the Grand Old Party. Delhi High Court today dismissed the Congress's plea challenging income tax department reassessment proceedings against it for about seven years. Uh, now, just to remind the viewers, this is the same party that was slamming the BJP over electoral bonds. With income tax unraveling cash transactions in its investigation, is this duplicity of Congress unraveling? Here's a comprehensive report, and then I come back with a panel of guests on the other side. Less than a month to go for the Lok Sabha polls, and the grand old party has suffered yet another major setback. The Delhi High Court dismissed the Congress's plea challenging the reassessment proceedings initiated against it by the Income Tax Department. Congress, meanwhile, has contested the reassessment proceedings. The Grand Old Party has been crying foul. It's a systematic, systematic effort is underway by the Prime Minister to cripple the Indian National Congress financially. Funds collected from the public are being frozen and money from our accounts is being taken away forcibly. And the income tax claim is that it will be settled under the court of law. The government doesn't give tax to the BJP kabhi income tax nahi bhi. Election Commission has not even said, wait a minute, you have frozen the bank account of the largest, uh, of one of the biggest political parties, largest opposition in the country. And already 
our ability to fight the election has been damaged. We've already lost a month. As the party teeters on the brink, trouble only seems to be mounting for Congress. Even as Congress vehemently lectured BJP on electoral bonds, do the cash transactions leave Congress's duplicity exposed? And as the tensions simmer, is Congress anticipating its own loss? That is the burning question. All right, uh, we have uh, those leaning towards the BJP, Karan Varma and uh, Binay Singh on the side of the Congress, uh, Nikhil Jain and, of course, uh, George Kurian. And uh, since uh, the story is about the Congress party, again, briefly, let me just explain what this is. Income tax authorities started a proceeding or investigation against the Congress party under Section 153C of the Income Tax Act. Uh, now, as per 153C, this is a third-party proceeding in the sense that income tax authorities have carried out some searches, some raids, they have gathered some information from somewhere. And if that leads to one particular direction, one particular person, one particular entity, then a 153C proceeding is launched. Now, this proceeding is going on for seven assessment years for the Congress party. And the income tax authorities maintain that in these seven years, whatever income the Congress party disclosed, there is much more than what it has disclosed, which it has received through these third party transactions. Now, from where these third party transactions have come? From states like Madhya Pradesh, from Karnataka, from Gujarat. These are all transactions in cash. Now, the information was gathered when, for example, those associated with then Chief Minister Kamal Nath were raided or searched in 2018-19 period. Those associated with D.K. Shivkumar or D.K. Shivkumar himself, now Deputy Chief Minister of Karnataka, then in a position but with Congress party, his facilities were searched and raided. The information collected and the data collected all landed at AICC headquarters on Akbar Road. Amount of cash in crores coming to the Congress party. Now, this is the same Congress party which is questioning the entire locus of electoral bonds as some kind of a scam. So that's the story we are discussing. Let me start with the George Korean. George Korean, uh, is it really a good idea to deal in black money and not have electoral bonds because they have KYC? Because they can be disclosed? Because now we have on the election commission website, even if belatedly, all information as to who bought the, mon bought the bonds and who gave to which political party, that transparency which the Congress leaders so wanted, don't want to practice for themselves. In the same period of electoral bonds, Congress party took cash worth about 500 crore rupees. That's the assessment of income tax. That's part of the document put before Delhi High Court, based on which the Delhi High Court has allowed the proceedings to go on George Kurian. Well, Abhishek, good evening to you, to my co-panelists on the show and to your audience. Uh, let me begin by saying and reiterate what uh, Sonia Gandhiji has said. It's a systematic effort to undermi under undermine by those in power to cripple the Congress, International Congress, financially. This is unprecedented and undemocratic and uncalled for. I strongly believe that, you know, uh, the first phase of election is less than 30 <coughs> days, uh, and the Congress party is yet to begin its campaign trail, and there are a lot of logistics and materials that need to be, you know, put in place uh, before we head on, and a lot of star campaigners need to travel across across uh, the length and breadth of the country. So it is very important. The Congress party is the principal opposition party, and it's important for to have a level playing field uh, with regards to the political parties on board who are contesting this election. So, Abhishek, I strongly believe that, you know, there is absolutely no level playing field feel out here with respect to Congress party, if the Bharatiya Janta party in the last 10 years of misrule and misgovernance, and as they claim that they have done good enough for the for the people at large uh, at India, uh, why are they so worried and, you know, uh, uh, nervous about the entire thing? Why, why uh, you know, use their machinery to, you know, cripple down the Congress's account? Uh, because financially, they're trying to, you know, break our backbone and, you know, so that we don't Do give a tough fight. Income tax authorities, mercenaries, Karan Verma, income tax authorities are mercenaries of the government? So, Abhishek, we are in an era and age where flouting norms should be considered normal. That is what the modus operandi of the opposition today is. They believe they are so entitled that they can flout all norms. Let me put some facts now on board. In As per Section 13A, political parties are exempt from paying tax, but not if they do not file their returns. 
the section number 220 and 221 of the IT Act take away that thing. So Congress did not file the returns in 2018-19. In 2021, they were sent a notice that it, it amounts to close to 135 crores. They challenged that. Fine, the Income Tax Appellate Tribunal said, leave aside whether it is 115 crores or 135 crores, you deposit 21 crores. They did not deposit 21 <coughs> crores in 2021. They did not deposit 21 crores in 2022. In 23, they challenged it and deposited only two CR. So now I don't think they should cry a horse when they've been given ample opportunities and every single time they have crossed the deadline Karan. and not even given not even given one tenth of the value. It was only fair Abhishek. that you deposit 21 crores and keep your dispute Karan. or keep this thing going on. But the Congress did not abide by that. And let me tell him, let me Karan. tell my friend, in 2012-13, one statistic, 88% of the Congress funds were in cash Karan. in less than 20,000. So much Karan. for crying transparency no, no, and so much for crying vendetta against electoral bonds and all that. Karan. This is their reality. They want to flout all norms yeah. and Karan. then they cry victim. Oh, democracy Karan. is being threatened. No, sir. Okay, Karan, let me just, let me just, uh, let me just, uh, let me just put some facts across. Karan, let me just put some facts across. Nikhil Jain, uh, you listen and then you respond. Entry in diary showing amount of 3 crore 75 lakhs paid at Akbar Road on 28th of February 2019. This is, remember, the period just ahead of elections. Yesterday, we had the top Congress leadership suggesting that they don't have money. In fact, the income tax authorities say apart from the 135 crores they have taken, the Congress still has cash and balances worth about 1,000 crore rupees plus. But this is about cash. Congress party in the same period when electoral bonds existed, taking cash through the aides of Kamal Nath, through the offices of DK Shiv Kumar, and the money coming to AICC. And, uh, and these are diary entries with specific dates and amounts. These are authentic documents based on which the Delhi High Court has asked the income tax authorities to go ahead with their investigation. Nikhil Jain, does the Congress party has any face saver left? I will take at this point, at this point, at this point, there is no credibility left in the income tax department. There is no credibility uh, credibility left in the agencies of the government. All of these departments, whether it's the ED, the CBI, the IT, they there are, is no credibility and, left in Delhi High Court. Court also, also. The election commission, they are they are acting like no, they are acting like internal departments of the BJP. Oh, sure there is no credibility left in election, election commission. commission. There is no credibility Absolutely left not. in Delhi High Court. Absolutely income not. tax authorities are mercenaries. No, Abhishek, what has the ED is what extended has the department, done? extended what has the election commission directorate the, of the BJP, right? The that's that's the only argument the left, Nikhil Jain. No, 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 no. The BJP has been sending messages to all the people in the country after the imposition of MCC by the government of India, Vixit Bharat and all of these political campaigns of the BJP. What action has been taken against the BJP? What action has been taken against Narendra Modi? Nothing at all. See, so when every single agency in the country, all these constitutional bodies, also like the Election Commission of India, if they are to pander to what the BJP wants to do, I'm sorry, two months before the election, I can't, you know... Uh, conceived that the Congress was taking any cash just because the income tax department has said that time and again we've seen these agencies frame people just to get uh, you know just to please their political masters okay yeah, Nikhil let me just put in let me just fill in some facts for you A the timing Bina I'll come to you the timing you have to understand the timing because you said that this is happening because ahead of elections <coughs> the assessment years for which Section 153C proceedings are going on. Our assessment year 2014-15 to 2020-21, the investigations began almost three years back. And, uh, and also the Congress party challenged it. The matter has come to the High Court now. And the High Court has today dismissed and asked, asked the proceedings to go on. So the timing is not connected with elections. The timing is connected with whatever process under income tax rules, the authorities followed number one. Come on, Abhishek. I, I, I and don't number two, my question is still right remains right. unanswered between George Kurian and Nikhil Jain. Why does the Congress party want 500 crore rupees cash? The same money you can take through electoral bonds. For God's sake, even Kamal Nath can give an electoral bond to the Congress party. DK Shiv Kumar can give an electoral bond to the Congress party. There is no problem. But why take cash? Are you, are you not guilty no, of promoting black money? How is it guilty of promoting black money? It is allowed to give 
political parties are allowed to receive donations in cash because cash so of 500 people, crore rupees can't be white money is that's why it's black money abhishek let me let me reply to him abhishek not all cash is black money <coughs> 500, 500 crores is not white money nikhil jain you know it 500 500 is an aggregation of smaller amounts political parties <coughs> are allowed to receive donations and white money has to be given why not give it by yes. check for god's sake okay binay singh binay singh these these questions are difficult to answer for the congress party binay singh but did the congress party go to the high court because it knew that if this information comes out there is going to be an embarrassment for them nikhil uh, uh, binay singh Abhishek, you look in the many of the recent cases where Indian agencies were involved, either it was ED, CBI, or income tax. The parties, the organizations, or the persons they went to the court, and the first thing, the first question, the court put in front of those agencies that why you should proceed with this case. What evidence do you have got? Why we should not give relief to this person? This was the asking by the court. and these agencies had to convince the court through the evidence that this yes, there is a case so don't challenge the courts don't challenge the agency and you know uh, abhishek congress has been a privileged lot many of the you know laws they were not applied on congress so no other person no other organization or no other party is entitled to you know have 500 crore donation in cash but congress must because they are having a legacy of you know great great people matlab ki nehru ji and you know many like that so they must have the privilege of that they must be exempted from that so basically my friend from congress they want to say that the court are biased the agencies are biased because they are applying the law so if they are they want to prove themselves unbiased okay. so they need to exempt from all charges of corruption and they need to allow to uh, uh, go uh, congress free on every charges of corruption this is what they want yes okay sir. okay now but th- there is another little troubling political aspect to this story also apart from the fact that this is embarrassing should be embarrassing for the congress party that they preferred cash over electoral bonds you know for whatever reasons maybe because they don't like bjp they don't like the idea coming from bjp so they don't want transparency they they want to deal with cash george kurian george kurian the there is a more troubling aspect and that's the political aspect this client relationship with regional satraps why should dk shivkumar be sending cash to 12 akbar road the aicc why should kamalnath be you know acting as an atm when the congress is in power in madhya pradesh and giving cash to the congress party i mean it's almost like a like in the olden days when there would be these satraps who would be owing allegiance to the emperor or the empire and would be sending their tribute their contribution and would be allowed to be free and do whatever they want to do that's really not the best of the political model this kind of cash federalism that the congress party really practiced george kurian well abhishek uh, i'll i'll come to your question uh, uh, let me let me ask my friends uh, out here uh, who supporting the bjp here karan and abhinay singh uh, is it illegal to sought uh, interim relief with respect to the probe which is going on and uh, demanding a quash- quashing of the probe uh, with respect to our financial uh, bank accounts uh, uh, with the with the supreme court judiciary is it wrong or is it illegal as a political party no, don't no. don't we have the uh, uh, authority or don't we have the uh, uh, you know <coughs> kind of uh, you know what i'm trying to say we, no, we karan, have all karan, the karan what's no, this argument to what's this argument like, ask, like it's not illegal of course please. to seek legal redress but it's illegal to keep black cash it's illegal to keep black money right cash right right there are two aspects to it abhishek one is the cash aspect karan. which has now come to the fore and the second one my friend mr kurian just said ki is it Uh, beyond our scope to uh, uh, go for a legal remedy let me tell him this has been going on from 3 years all the tax authorities were saying that you had to deposit 21 crores against the line of 135 cr why could you not deposit 21 crores when you are sitting on pots and pots of cash 
and then you cry victim and say, oh, don't we have the authority to go there? You've given only two CR against 21 CR. Why are you, why are you holding yourself back? Why don't you pay the 21 CR? When you've not filed the income tax returns in 2018-19, you lose the privilege and then you have to deposit the tax. The tax collection they are saying is 135 crores. You can dispute that. That is within your rights. But you have to deposit 20% of that, which is 21 CR. Why are you not depositing that? That's my pointed question to you. Well, well, Karan, uh, we strongly no, believe that's that again you know, on the legal the redress part, issue. But party is trying being singled out here in this case uh, by the yeah, go ahead, go ahead, uh, go ahead, Corinne, Mr. Quinn, go ahead. By the income tax department here. So, uh, because uh, it's it's a, on the eve of elections that you know we hardly have any time for uh, all the this campaign trail that we want to carry out uh, to a tough fight to the Bharatiya Janata Party led NDA government uh, at the center. And so it's it's a, not a level playing field altogether. And uh, we strongly believe that, you know, the court will take cognizance and give interim relief to the Congress party. So Abhishek, court has not given you interim relief, Mr. Korean. But Nikhil, 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 I want Nikhil to come on this. I want Nikhil to come, on, come in on this. Nikhil, you know, I'm just giving you numbers. I'm giving you numbers. You said that it, it's not it's not illegal uh, and, and you can have you can have a lot of uh, cash also, which is not black money. But you see, in the seven assessment years, 79 crore rupees in 2014-15, 40 crore rupees in 2015-16, 32.44 crore rupees in 2016-17, only 6 crore rupees in 2017-18, only 4 crore rupees in 2018-19, 348 crore rupees in 2020-21, corresponding to the period when Congress was in power in Madhya Pradesh, 12 crore rupees in 2021. This is assessment. Remember, this is not the tax that the Congress party has to pay. The summation is about 500 crore rupees. This is cash. Now, if I go into specifics, this can get more embarrassing, you know. 90 lakh rupees given to Digvijay Singh. This has come from somebody's diary of someone who's aid of Kamal Nath. He has written in his diary, 90 lakh rupees given to Mr. Digvijay Singh, the former chief minister of uh, Madhya Pradesh. You know, documents have found that show payments of 17 crore rupees to AICC on a certain date. 17 crore rupees are cash dena. I mean, obviously, this is black money. And you don't want electoral bonds. Nikhil Jain, something is amiss. I mean, there is, there's, there's, the, the math is not adding up. Who is saying all of that? Who is making all of these disclosures? The income tax department, the same income tax department. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. I am telling no, you. You didn't. You yeah. did not go to the. I am telling you the Delhi High Court's observation. I am telling you the Delhi High Court's observation. Forget about income tax because according to you so they are mercenaries. The Delhi High, Delhi High Court says income tax department appears to have collated substantial and concrete evidence against Congress to warrant further scrutiny and examination of its income. This is Delhi High Court, right? This is not income tax ED. <laughs> they say. There are references to unaccounted transactions with respect to the 2019 Lok Sabha elections and MP assembly elections of 2018 and 2013. The material which forms part of the satisfaction note of assessing officer also captures details of disbursements made to candidates vying in upcoming elections. There is a detailed reference to payments allegedly made to MPs, MLAs and candidates. This is all information collated, as I said, through third party investigations. And that's why Section 153C proceedings. I think uh, Congress party is on a really sticky wicket, Nikhil Jain, and difficult to defend. I know it's, it's yeah. difficult for you yeah, also okay. to defend. Like right now, right now, when you read the court's observations like that, right now what we can see is that perhaps the case is not entirely bogus. But there isn't yet a judicial scrutiny of the matter. The co court has only looked at the material placed before it by the income tax department. That material has not gone through judicial scrutiny. Let it go through judicial scrutiny and then we'll figure out if the Congress has indeed actually dealt in all this uh, alleged black money or not. For all we know, these, uh, uh, you know, this entire bank of money, the Congress has been accounted for This it. is judicial it scrutiny. In Delhi High Court is judicial scrutiny. You can of no, course no, no, go no, to the no. Supreme Court, obviously, but then... Delhi High Court Abhishek, also is judicial scrutiny, Nikhil Jain. For God's sake, you are also a lawyer, senior advocate. The truth right? is, Abhishek, not a senior Congress advocate, is like Mr. that Pur. Kabila. Secondly, they have uh, that Kabila no, mentality. Abhishek, Abhishek. And they all charge the Jizya on all these the feudal lords, like Digvijay Singh, D.K. Shiv Kumar, Kamal Nath. So this is their Kabila mentality where they charge Jizya on each of these and all of them have been given targets. Itna paisa lao AICC mein, aise lao AICC mein. 
This is now coming to the fourth. This has always Sarah, been an I open. I think you seem to know more about the Congress than people working in the Congress seem to be knowing about I, I the party. I still in touch with you. I guess that's how it is. Where is it? 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 The chief minister of the BJP That's and other ministers and of the BJP. That's done and dusted. But right? I don't know but where you are talking about this cut money and commissions and fixed targets and all of that. I guess you'll know that better. You supporting Congress, I'm sure you must have heard. No, no, about no. That. This is this is this is all data. This is all data which is part of the court documents. Paid INR ninety lakhs to Mr. Digvijay Singh. Breakup of payment made to other MLAs found in the Excel sheet of so and so sheet with the name of MLAs found and seized. During the search on Praveen Kakkar, I'm just reading the court document, right? I don't know who Praveen Kakkar is. Possibly someone associated with the uh, the former Chief Minister of Madhya Pradesh. Documents found during the search on Himanshu Sharma that corroborated the details found in Excel live Excel sheet. So and so, uh, other seized material includes various documents found at the premises of Lalit Kumar Chalani, Himanshu Sharma, Pratik Joshi, and some of these documents have heading election, and they have been corroborated with. the cash entries made now it's a long list long list i mean i don't want to take more names and embarrass essentially you know those people who are in some ways associated close to or etc with congress leaders in these respective states so binay singh binay singh you think this really gives sort of a license to the regional leaders to indulge in corruption because they can say okay the national leadership wanted cash they have been given cash and the national leadership also loses moral high ground to control any kind of corruption at the state level i will say there are three important points out of the whole story the income tax department they have disclosed and today it is the news that 1000 crore corpus is already there with congress party <coughs> so there is no scarcity of fund they can uh, nicely you know they can contest this lok sabha election and the second part is that the accounts are not frozen only 135 crore recovery has been made so there are not scarcity of fund and the third point is that for a 90 lakh rupees transaction for you and me and for the common people it may look big but for the congress party is like a chawani and a thanni so they are putting an entry simple entry into the diary they are not disclosing it so it must be asked by mr okay. dr singh he, he remembers okay. that or not i i think abhi said he won't remember because 90 lakh is Benai. not a figure which a congress party leader should remember that's the thing it's a very small amount for binay binay you know i i i have uh, unfortunately i've run out of time but this is really this should be embarrassing for the congress party karan verma and nikhil jain and uh, you know the fact that the congress party took cash during the period when electoral bonds route was available is more disturbing i think this debate is going to continue in fact uh, editor in chief fondo goswami is going to Abhishek, take it up thing, at 10 pm thing, as well thing, and uh, one, one we're not slipping point. into a break i am told there is a breaking news development coming in possibly connected with the remand of uh, delhi chief minister arvind kejriwal because uh, the enforcement directorate had sought 10 days of his custodial interrogation the court had uh, sat through more than 3 hours of arguments on both the sides but it seems uh, the order has not come so we actually slip into a short break thank you so much uh, karan nikhil binay singh and uh, george korean for joining us uh, and on the other side trending burning question is back with niranjan narayan swam ED custody Arvind Kejriwal will continue to remain in ED custody he has received a setback the court has remanded him to 6 days of ED custody he will be with the ED till uh, the 28th of March till the 28th of March so 6 more days in ED custody it's a big setback for Arvind Kejriwal Aishwarya is also joining me live it's a big setback Aishwarya we were tracking that uh, tracking that hearing live All of those arguments have uh, not worked in his favor. This is official. Legal setback for him. ED gets a seven-day custody of the Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal, and the big question is this, Niranjan, that will the Delhi government now run from the prison? Because this is this is going to become a constitution.
international crisis viewers and this is now which has just come in ed sort a 10 day custody they have been granted a 7 day custody till 28th of march so the festival of holi for arvind kejriwal he has to celebrate it from behind bars but more importantly there is going to be a constitutional crisis niranjan if and if he does not resign then either he has to be removed or replaced because you cannot have a chief minister running a government from behind bars it is just not there the constitution does not allow you cannot hold meetings you cannot hold briefings you cannot meet either your officers or your ministers so very clearly you cannot run a government a whole state government and this is something which the aam aadmi party really needs to understand but at this point of time once again breaking news coming in 7 day custody has been granted to the enforcement directorate of arvind kejriwal so he'll be with the ed in the ed custody till the 28th of march back to you in the studio niranjan thank you for that ashwarya gari in a simple breaking news right now after all the arguments put forth by abhishek manu singh we senior advocate in the supreme court arvind kejriwal's lawyer argued that there was no need argued that there was no need for the arrest of arvind kejriwal the court has deemed it fit that, that he remains in 6 days of ed custody the enforcement directorate had argued saying that they need arvind kejriwal they need arvind kejriwal in custody to question him because he was being evasive he was not being truthful with the facts he was trying to halt and stall the questions and the facts in the case let me go across to rakshita as well rakshita a big setback to him huge setback Absolutely big update, big update coming in, uh, Niranjan. Uh, it's a big setback for Arvind Kejriwal. He has been sent to the ED custody for 28 uh, for for till the 28th of March. That is a six-day custody, and uh, of course the ED was seeking, as per reports, that uh, it wanted 10-day custody, 10-day remand for Arvind Kejriwal, but it has been granted six-day custody. Now, of course, the question remains uh, how Arvind Kejriwal runs the government. Remember, he is not convicted yet, so uh, he can, of course, uh, if you talk about the Constitution, uh, constitutionality he can in fact run the government but we have to see if it all uh, that is what the party decides remember the top brass is behind the bars arvind kejriwal will be coming in here at the ed office any time from now heavy security deployment is already in place and we've seen uh, after the court is up this order there was more movement as far as the, the security personnel are concerned there is heavy security deployment and as we expect arvind kejriwal to come here now because he will stay in ed custody he spend the night here at the ed headquarters in the national capital where we are reporting from and now for six more days for six more days niranjan because ed custody uh, is something that you cannot uh, get a bail from that that happens later on when you are uh, when you approach the court and you have the judicial custody and also remember this is a pmla case so the onus of proof is on arvind kejriwal so it's very difficult for uh, arvind kejriwal to even find a wiggle room from here we saw the lengthy conversation the, uh, the lengthy arguments that happened in the court today and uh, there were of course uh, allegations made by the ed uh, saying that there is enough proof there sufficient proof to uh, say that arvind kejriwal was indeed the kingpin that he indeed was the main conspirator in this case remember k kavita also got no reprieve today she got no uh, reprieve from the court today and that of course also was quite a hint uh, well, of course uh, he the uh, sitting chief minister and we have to see now what happens next the trouble mounting in for arvind kejriwal and uh, and the aman party remember ahead of lok sabha elections we have to wait and watch what happens how the party's day to day affairs are run how it can actually spell disaster for the entire party also All right, we're getting in uh, some more breaking. I think we're getting in some pictures from outside the courtroom. I'm just cutting across uh, to those pictures of Arvind Kejriwal <coughs> leaving the court. If I'm not wrong, those are pictures of Arvind Kejriwal leaving the court after the hearing has concluded. Arvind Kejriwal, there. Let's see if there's an audio to that. Let's see if there's any audio. Arvind Kejriwal is quoted as saying that his entire life is dedicated to the nation. When he came to the courtroom. and arvind kejriwal has been sent to custody those are images of him smiling i can see him smiling there as he leaves the courtroom after he's been uh, remanded to 6 days of ed custody he will continue to remain in ed custody the enforcement directorate put out a very very fierce argument breaking down the details of his alleged role 
in the liquor scam. They called him a kingpin. They called him the conspiracy, uh, conspirator, saying that he was aware of the entire conspiracy. And uh, this is a big setback to him. Uh, the entire grounds of his argument was on whether the arrest was required at all. And the court has allowed him to remain in custody, which means the court is convinced with the ED argument that uh, there is a need for his uh, uh, custody with uh, the enforcement directorate. And he will remain in custody till the 28th of March at 2 p.m. is the next hearing. 28th of March, 2 p.m. is the next hearing. And uh, let me see if I have uh, Shavan also joining us live. Uh, Rakshita is live with us. And uh, we have a few panelists also joining us on the debate. We'll go across to them as well. And uh, just to tell our viewers that Arvind Kejriwal was quoted as saying that uh, he will dedicate his life to the nation, that his entire life is dedicated to the nation. There are more pictures coming in of uh, the convoy leaving the uh, Delhi court, which has granted him, uh, of, to uh, sent him rather, to six days of ED custody. And I'm getting in some more breaking news updates of uh, the details of what the court has felt. In fact, I'm waiting for the detailed judgment. We should be able to get that anytime now. But the additional solicitor general, S.V. Raju, told the Rouse Avenue court in the national capital that Arvind Kejriwal, they used the word kingpin, calling him the kingpin, the main conspirator, and that he was directly involved in the implementation of the liquor policy. So... It's, uh, it's, 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 it's uh, very, very bad news for the Aam Party. The Supreme Leader will continue to remain in, in custody. Deepak is also joining us live. Let me quickly take one question with him before I go across to the panelists. Deepak, it's a setback to him. Six days. It's not ten days. It's six days only. Okay, I seem to have a bad line there. Let me go across to our panelists right now. Karan Varma, political analyst, Savio Rodriguez, Dude, Chief Editor, Goa Chronicle, Nikhil Jain, political analyst, Akash Nik Muni. Till about 28th yeah. of March. And on 28th of March, he will be presented before the court again at 2 p.m. Just a Kal Manya Kejiwal Ji ko raat ke samay gravdar kiya tha 9 baje. Aur aaj 2 baje unhe यहां राउज एवेन्यू की स्पेशल कोर्ट में पेश किया था दोनों तरफ से वकील जायबान की बहस हुई ईडी 10 दिन का रिमांड मांग रही थी और उनका कहना था कि उन्हें मनी की ट्रेल जानने के लिए उनकी कस्टोडियल इंटरोगेशन करनी जरूरी है 10 दिन की मांग रहे थे अब जज साहिबा ने सारी चीज कंसीडर करके 6 दिन का रिमांड दिया है और अब 28 तारीख को यहां पेश होंगे दोबारा 2 बजे देखिए उनकी तरफ से कहा गया कि जो पैसा गोवा इस्तेमाल हुआ है वो इल गॉटन मनी थी और उनके पास कुछ ऐसे गवाहों के जो उन्होंने कहा बयान हैं जिससे पता चलता है कि उनको कैस की डिलीवरी हुई है परंतु हमारी तरफ से जो वकील साहिबान थे उन्होंने कहा कि इसमें कहीं भी अरविंद केजीवाल जी का ना पहले कभी नाम था ना आज के दिन का नाम है और जिन गवाहों के बयान ईडी ने रिकॉर्ड किए हैं उनमें भी उनका नाम कहीं नहीं है ऐसे में उनकी कस्टोडियल इंटरोगेशन बनती नहीं है और हमने उसको अपोज किया था पर अब 6 दिन का चूंकि रिमांड हो गया है जज साहिब ने कर दिया है इसलिए अब वो 28 तारीख को यहां पेश होंगे well, there you heard it. Arvind Kejriwal will be in the Enforcement Directorate's custody till about 28th of March and on at 2 p.m. on the, the 28th of March he will be presented again before the court and in these... Uh, Excuse me, I'll come back to you. Just hold on. The response, the first response to what has happened today, because we've tracked uh, the developments in the courtroom this morning, all through the day. It's a big setback, whichever way you look at it. Uh, Savio is with us, Nikhil Jain, political analyst, leans towards the Congress, and Akash Deep Muni completes the panel. He leans towards the Amadi party. Uh, I don't know whether you followed, uh, you know, the minute-to-minute -minute update, uh, Savio, but the Enforcement Directorate has used terms like kingpin, conspirator, uh, 
laying down the details of his alleged involvement, right, including the Hawala route that was used, the companies that were involved, the area in Mumbai from where the Hawala money moved, how it moved from Chennai to Delhi to Mumbai, and then Goa, are very, very serious charges. You know, Niranjit, I am not surprised at the charges that have been made by the Enforcement Directorate. What is most disappointing to me, however, is that Arvind Kejriwal, who was the face of the anti-corruption movement in India with the fight of India against corruption, a fight that I was a part of as well when Anna Hazare and he and many other people were together. Today, he has become the face of corruption. And what is even more shocking and sad is that it has dragged my state, a state like Goa, known for people of integrity, into the mess of money laundering, into the mess yes. of kickbacks from which money that was allegedly got as per ED utilized during the Goa elections 2022. It has shocked the people of Goa. What I genuinely believe and what I told a lot of the people in Goa is that the Aam Army Party is now acting Sadio, like a sheep. I think the Aam Army Party bull. is responding. The first response of the Aam Army Party, but Sadio, with, your really, permission, with your permission, the first response really of the Aam Army Party is coming into the in sheep uh, to him being remanded. I'm, the first response of the Aam Army Party coming in. I'm just coming across to that. I'm coming back to you. media cell. ईडी द्वारा जमा की गई रिमांड एप्लीकेशन को सारे मीडिया चैनल्स को भेजता है जैसे कि ईडी इन्फोर्समेंट डायरेक्टोरेट भारतीय जनता पार्टी का कोई संगठन का हिस्सा है जो भारतीय जनता पार्टी उनकी प्रेस रिलीज इशू कर रहा है आज यह बिल्कुल साफ है कि ईडी पिछले दो साल की इन्वेस्टिगेशन के बाद एक रुपए का भी प्रोसीड्स ऑफ क्राइम नहीं ढूंढ पाई है दो साल की इन्वेस्टिगेशन 500 से ज्यादा अफसर हजारों रेड्स लेकिन आम आदमी पार्टी के किसी भी नेता के पास किसी भी मंत्री के पास एक रुपए भी प्रोसीड्स ऑफ क्राइम नहीं मिले हैं फिर भी आम आदमी पार्टी के नंबर वन नेता नंबर टू नेता नंबर तीन नेता नंबर चार नेता सबको गिरफ्तार करके जेल में डाल दिया है जो ईडी का प्रशासनिक तंत्र के माध्यम से भ्रष्टाचार को परिभाषित करेगा उसका ब्यौरा मिला अरविंद केजरीवाल और उनके कृत्यों के माध्यम से मीडिया की एजेंसीज और जो वर्तमान में ऑनलाइन दस्तावेज मौजूद हैं ये सभी दस्तावेज और मीडिया चैनल्स पर प्रसारित कुछ तथ्य दिल दहला देने वाले हैं आज कोर्ट में जब यह तथ्य प्रस्तुत किया गया कि अरविंद केजरीवाल द्वारा चिन्हित विजय नायर के सौजन्य से कुछ विशिष्ट शराब कंपनियों ने बैठकर शराब की पॉलिसी बनाई तो अरविंद केजरीवाल जी के किसी भी वकील ने इस तथ्य का खंडन नहीं किया आज कोर्ट में कुछ बैंक ट्रांजैक्शंस का विशेष उल्लेख हुआ एक बैंक ट्रांजैक्शन ऐसा जिसके अंतर्गत समीर महेंद्र एक करोड़ की राशि 
मेसर्स राधा इंडस्ट्रीज में ट्रांसफर करते हैं दूसरा कोर्ट में जो मीडिया की एजेंसीज के माध्यम से दस्तावेजों में ध्यान में आता है विजय नायर को समीर महेंद्र दो से चार करोड़ रुपया देते हैं इसका भी अरविंद केजरीवाल ने खंडन नहीं किया ना ही अपने आप को इससे दरकिनार किया आज कोर्ट में सीबीआई और इंडियन पीनल कोड के अंतर्गत पीएमएलए के अंतर्गत जितने केसेस दाखिल हुए थे और जो विविध कोर्ट्स के सम्मुख पेश हुए उसके खिलाफ भी अरविंद केजरीवाल के लॉयर्स ने कोई स्पेसिफिक मंतव्य नहीं दिया ऐसा अगर आप ऑनलाइन लीगल प्रोसीजर्स को रिपोर्ट करने वाली एंटिटीज का भी खाका पड़े तो ध्यान में आता है केस के कुछ तथ्य हैं जो जानकारी में आता है कि आज कोर्ट के सम्मुख प्रस्तुत हुए एक के चार नौ दो हजार बीस दिल्ली सरकार एक एक्सपर्ट कमेटी बनाती है उस कमेटी का बनना ये ऑर्डर देने वाले इशू करने वाले व्यक्ति का नाम है मनीष सिसोदिया एक्सपर्ट कमेटी को चेयर करते हैं तब के एक्साइज कमिश्नर और इस कमेटी ने तेरह दस दो हजार बीस अपनी रिपोर्ट सबमिट की ऐसा जानकारी में आता है एक्सपर्ट कमेटी की रिपोर्ट 31 दिसंबर 2020 में सार्वजनिक की जाती है और 14,671 फीडबैक्स आते हैं ये सब अरविंद केजरीवाल जी की काउंसिल ऑफ मिनिस्टर्स में कैबिनेट मीटिंग में पांच दो 2021 में प्रस्तुत होते हैं ताकि इसे एग्जामिन किया जाए जो ग्रुप ऑफ मिनिस्टर्स बनता है उसमें तीन मुख्य लोग हैं मनीष सिसोदिया सत्येंद्र जैन कैलाश गहलोत मैं आपका ध्यान आकृष्ट करना चाहूंगी कि जो कोर्ट के सम्मुख दस्तावेज प्रस्तुत हुए हैं उसमें यह साफ इंगित है कि इन दस्तावेजों में बिना किसी कारण क्लैरिफिकेशन और मॉडिफिकेशन किया जाता है बदला हुआ यह दस्तावेज दोबारा जनता के सम्मुख कभी प्रस्तुत नहीं होता कुछ तथ्य ऐसे जिनसे अरविंद केजरीवाल जी ने आज कोर्ट में अपने लॉयर्स के माध्यम से एक बार भी अपने आप को दरकिनार नहीं किया एक मनीष सिसोदिया के अपने सेक्रेटरी ने सात दिसंबर 2022 में ये कबूल किया कि मनीष सिसोदिया ने सी अरविंद नामक उस सेक्रेटरी को केजरीवाल के घर बुलाया तीस पेज का डॉक्यूमेंट दिया जब इस व्यक्ति को अरविंद केजरीवाल के घर बुलाया गया तब कमरे में मनीष सिसोदिया सत्येंद्र जैन और अरविंद केजरीवाल उपस्थित थे
ये कहा गया है कि सी अरविंद मनीष सिसोदिया के सेक्रेटरी ने ये कबूल किया है कि मनीष सिसोदिया ने उनको इन सब की उपस्थिति में कहा कि जो दस्तावेज थमाया जा रहा है वही ग्रुप ऑफ मिनिस्टर्स की रिपोर्ट बनेगी उस दस्तावेज में कैसे शराब की कंपनियों को लाइसेंस मिलेगा कितना प्रॉफिट मार्जिन होगा ये सारे तथ्य थे इसका भी खंडन अरविंद केजरीवाल के वकीलों ने नहीं किया एक और तथ्य बुच्ची बाबू सीए ऑफ मिस के कविता 23 फरवरी 2023 उन्होंने स्वयं ये स्टेटमेंट दिया कि विजय नायर जिनको अरविंद केजरीवाल अपना माय बॉय कहकर संबोधित कर चुके थे उन्होंने शराब के इस घोटाले के संदर्भ में ये ऑफर दिया कि कुछ पॉलिसी में ऐसा बदलाव हो सकता है जिससे कि कविता को मुनाफा हो मात्र ये स्टेटमेंट नहीं है कोर्ट में बुच्ची बाबू जो सीए हैं के कविता के उनके व्हाट्सएप मैसेजेस भी उपलब्ध हैं ऐसा कोर्ट के सम्मुख कहा गया तब भी अरविंद केजरीवाल जी के वकीलों ने इस स्टेटमेंट का और स्टेटमेंट से संबद्ध व्हाट्सएप मैसेजेस का खंडन नहीं किया सार्वजनिक रूप से अब दस्तावेज जो उपलब्ध हैं उसमें कोर्ट में जांच एजेंसी ने कहा कि अरविंद केजरीवाल ने घूस मांगी साउथ ग्रुप से उसके संदर्भ में श्री एम एस रेड्डी का बयान पिछले साल का 6 सात 2023 और सात सत्रह सात 2023 स्पष्ट रूप से लिखा था कि अरविंद केजरीवाल ने सेक्रेटेरिएट के अपने ऑफिस में 16 दिसंबर 2021 शाम साढ़े चार बजे मिलने का समय दिया मिलने का कारण जो दस्तावेजों में उपलब्ध है अरविंद केजरीवाल का स्टेटमेंट एज पर एम एस रेड्डी कि हम दिल्ली में सबको बिजनेस करने के लिए बुला रहे हैं कविता डॉटर ऑफ चीफ मिनिस्टर तेलंगाना के चंद्रशेखर राव ने हमें अप्रोच किया है और अरविंद केजरीवाल की पार्टी आम आदमी पार्टी को 100 करोड़ रुपए देने का विषय रखा है तत्पश्चात एम एस रेड्डी ने कहा कि 19 मार्च 2021 को कविता उनसे मिली 